Good morning. You're listening to FloridaDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Dr. Susan Chung, the Director of Research with the ASID, standing for American Society of Interior Designers. Susan, how are you doing? I'm well. The ASID published a resiliency study, and for those that want to see it, by the way, you can just Google ASID resiliency study, and it comes right up. It's a nice little, I guess, 35 or so page report you led this process it was in the first three weeks of july and you polled 34 designers uh, some of which real noteworthy i noticed ken wilson participated with perkins and will and k Sargent with uh, hok so you polled them you got their thinking i guess the premise was to see what was the state of design in this covid19 era is that right so we actually approached this during the summer, mm-hmm. you're correct, but prior to that, when COVID just started, we definitely wanted to kind of get a pulse of the industry and mm-hmm. started some pulse surveys. And from those pulse surveys, we found the interior design community was showing many signs of resiliency. We wanted to capture that in a wider and broader way, so had sent out an industry-wide survey with a total of 503 responses, and then also had focus group discussions with 34 design leaders for the discussion. Okay, so it was quantitative at first and then qualitative, and then you issued the report. So what were some of the key findings? So resilience, which is the ability to prepare, plan for, absorb, recover from, and more successfully adapt to adverse events, or just simply put, spring back from stress. Right. It was looking at this from a personal aspect, but also looking at the community. The key takeaways for me was where do we find the ability to bounce back? Mm-hmm. So for our interior designers, we're natural, creative problem solvers. This pandemic has shown a huge light on the importance of health and safety within the interior environment bringing in evidence and making sure that the environment created and designed is in a way that puts the health, safety, and welfare of the occupants. So we found in the study that's where the interior design community has dug deep and been able to find that strength to spring back forward. Um, Another is the nature of interior design work being interdisciplinary. It's not just the designers, but we're working with the manufacturers. We're working with acquisitions, so many different experts, and we've been an orchestrator during the design process and balancing and accessing these different knowledge, resources, and areas to come up with creative design solutions. I would say the third one is that we've always been one for change. The design industry has been such great innovators, really looking into the needs of people and understanding what is next or what needs to happen, what needs to change. Some of the things that you learned is how many of the interior designers uh, continue to have a job, the, the, how many were furloughed, uh, how many are working at home. That's some interesting information. But, you know, the, the area, you know, so with the short interview, I'd kind of like to hit on is the areas that are going to be most impacted where you're expecting the most drastic changes. And I'd like to run through them. This is actually on page 33 of the research. Entertainment venues got the highest score. Uh, we understand that. That's where a lot of people gather. A shared living facilities, K-12 through education facilities, hospitality. This is going from most to less most. Higher education facilities, health care facilities, office, retail space, and then residences was at 15%. So that was interesting, didn't you think? Definitely. Yeah, and another piece of information to get that I thought was interesting was how will we change our homes. That's on page 34. You, you say number one is a more defined workspace, office space. I think that's interesting because, as you know, interior design for a while had been moving to fewer walls and more open spaces. That's a little shift. And then additional technologies in the home, additional clean living, more defined e-learning space and workstations, and enhanced outdoor space. So that was interesting, wasn't it? Yes. I mean, we've been hearing from um, our focus group participants, but if you think about it, with the pandemic really moving to work from home, they're yeah. spending so much time at home and really seeing, oh, you know, what changes should be made, could be made. Residences have always kind of been more of 
you spend time in residences, but not a lot of activities. But now all of the activities have shifted to the home. It's a workplace, a school, it becomes a space to rest. That kind of changes the, the purpose, changes the, the priorities of what a home should be. Mm-hmm. And that enhanced outdoor living options, for sure. Just understanding that we do need to be connected more to the natural environment for our health. Not just for clean air, but also for biophilic reasons, for our innate connection to nature. Susan, I'm curious, you know, the the largest sector of commercial space is the corporate office space. What do you think the long-term prospect is for that? Do you think we're going to need less of that down the road? Or is it we're going to maybe change the way that formats or looks and we'll still need as much space in, say, a year or two? I don't know about the quantity of space, but as a researcher, I am excited. This becomes a great opportunity to do research for any business to really think through really what do they need to shift to. Does remote work actually work for them? Right. Um, And does that work for short term or can that still be successful in the long term? Uh I think it becomes an assessment of the business and the organization first. And then coupled with how can the physical environment support your needs. The support of the needs may change. It may not be for individual workstations. It may be, okay, this is a place where we need to gather together and collaborate in a safe way. But when you get into the quantity, the actual size, the amount of space, I'm not too sure because I do think that physical space is still needed. We do need to congregate together. We are social beings, and we do need that presence. It's definitely not going away. Yeah. Um, it's just a matter of what's the purpose and what can it support. And what is your next research project? Have you identified that yet? We're looking into what the impact is at the home. All right, Susan, well, it's good to talk to you. I appreciate you spending time with our audience. Again, been talking to Dr. Susan Chung, the Director of Research for ASID, about their recent resiliency study. And you've been listening to Kempar and Floridaily.net.